arguably the best conditions for landscape photography when you have that big wide open scene you have that beautiful golden light shining through and it just adds a lot of atmosphere and depth to your images unfortunately getting conditions like this are a lot easier said than done and a lot of times just adding a little bit in post-processing can help to emulate that look when you didn't quite get it perfectly in the field. I'm Austin James Jackson, landscape photographer based in Southern Utah. In today's video, we're talking all about how to add glow to your images. I'm going to show you guys three different ways to do it. Once in Lightroom, once in Photoshop, and another way using a little plugin that I like to use to add a little bit of glow to my scene. Um, each one works a little bit differently, and you may find one works better than another in certain scenarios, but you may also just find that you're going to want to use the one in whatever software where you edit in. So without waiting any longer, let's go ahead and jump right in there. First, I'm gonna show you guys how I add glow to this image in Lightroom. Now this is a much easier concept to do on images where there's already a little bit of atmosphere glow to begin with. You can see there's a little bit on this image, but we are really gonna enhance it and make it look a lot stronger. So in Lightroom, what you wanna do is go to develop. We're going to, and you can see I've already applied some edits to this photo, but what we're gonna do is open up the masking dialog box here, close that down, make the image a little bigger. On this particular image, um, what I'm gonna do is use both the linear and the radial gradient. I'm gonna hit Command minus to zoom out a couple times, give me some more space. You'll see why in just a second. First thing that I wanna do is just to enhance the light up here, I almost wanna just make it a little bit darker on the bottom. We're gonna use the linear gradient. Now, as you drag the linear gradient, anything that's white is whatever effect you are about to apply over here, anything that's white, it's gonna be applied totally to. Anything in between white and black, anything in the gray zone here is gonna be partially applied. Anything in the black, it won't be applied at all. I'm looking for something to write about there. You can see as I darken this, I can darken down the bottom part of my image. I can just make it nice and feathered just like that. You can toggle this eyeball here and see how we've darkened it. Now I wanna create one more mask here, use the radial gradient. I'm gonna click and drag, make that nice and big. You'll wanna make sure the feather's at 100. If it's down at zero, you can see uh, it comes in much too strong, uh, much too quickly. So you wanna make sure that feather is up at 100. Drag this around to wherever your light source is from. A lot of times if it's just in the corner of your image, that's fine. Um, or if it's even in your image, that's fine as well. You can adjust the size of this as needed for whatever image you are working with. For my image, I think about in there is gonna look good. I'm gonna increase the exposure. We're gonna scroll down and we may drop the dehaze as well. And we're also gonna warm this up to help kind of emulate sunlight coming in. We don't need it to be too crazy warm, but just a little bit. Bring that exposure up. Now, if you're finding that it's getting worked in a little too fast, you can either drop your settings or you can just open this up to increase the feather a little bit more. Somewhere about in there is looking pretty good to me. You can see this was probably like three or four minutes. And we created all of this nice light bleeding in through our scene. That looks great. Now, of course, if you wanted to do a little bit of masking out to make things look a little bit more realistic, I'll show you how to do that a little bit more in Photoshop. But on this particular photo, you can also intersect the mask. So I could go intersect mask with, and then I could do anything from, you know, brush would probably be a good place to start. Um, or you could even use luminance range if you want to subtract it from some of the darker areas in your scene, something like in there. You can see a lot of times the only problem with doing this is that it does give your image kind of a weird look around the edge. So I usually don't recommend doing this a ton here in Lightroom, um, but if you are gonna do that, I would recommend intersecting with a brush and then you can paint out or paint in the spots that you would like to intersect the mask with. Let's go ahead and jump over into Photoshop now. We've got this image. You can see this beautiful sunlight here, but I want it to be doing more. It's just not doing enough for my image. Um, there's multiple ways that you can do this. Probably the most common way that you see landscape photographers working today is by creating a new layer. You've got your layer here. Change the blend mode. Usually soft light or overlay is a good place to be. For painting light, I like soft light. Then you can go in with your brush tool. You're going to want to make sure your hardness is at 0%. Size is going to totally depend on what you're painting. And then open up your color. You are going to use a color to paint in here. 
usually somewhere over on this left side, maybe about a quarter of the way over. It's going to be a good place to be in terms of um, it's not going to be too saturated. If I come over here, it's going to come in way too saturated. And we can adjust this in a second. We can hit OK, go back down, and then we can just begin to paint. Now, you can see how quickly this works in there, and it matches up pretty well with the sunlight. So this is at 100% opacity. Of course, we want to lower this to probably 10 to 15 maybe. And now we can just click around. Maybe you can hear my mouse clicking. I'm just clicking all over, adding to the glow. Now, additionally, what I like to do is create another new layer, leave it on normal, and then do a little bit more saturated. I like to come in a little bit higher opacity. And you can click in here. Actually, let's go with lower opacity this time. Let's go 20%. You can just click. And you can see how you can just add a little bit of warmth that way on normal. So you can do this really to your heart's content. Um, I'm going to go back on this first layer and just kind of paint in just a little bit more through here just to kind of help emulate that glow a little bit. And now when you're looking at this, you're probably thinking, wow, that looks horribly unrealistic because now we're, you can see how we're covering the um, object here. Now, how you're going to make this look realistic is you're going to use masking tools. So if you've used multiple layers to do this, hold shift, click on both layers, put them in a new group. You can call this, um, you know, whatever you want. Let's just call it glow. Then you're going to go in with your layer mask here. Click on the layer mask button. You're going to grab your brush tool, black on the layer mask. We're going to go to 100% opacity, and we are going to increase the hardness to like 90-ish percent. Then we're going to zoom in using Command Plus or Control Plus on PC. I'm adjusting the size of my brush using the opening bracket. Now you'll paint this out, and the reason why you want to paint this out is because it's going to make this look so much more realistic, especially when you paint this out up here. Now, is there easier ways to do this? Yes, if you didn't want to bother with painting this out, you could also go in with something like the quick selection tool here. You could make a selection like that. Um, down here where there's a little bit less contrast between the objects, you're gonna have a little bit more mixed results, um, but you can certainly hit part of it in here. Now that you have that selection, You'll go back onto your layer mask here. You'll grab your black brush. I'll paint that through. And once you're done with that, hit Command D or Control D on PC to deselect. Now you can come in here. And as you get further away, you can also lower the opacity and lower the hardness and just kind of touch up through here and just feather it out. Ultimately, what you're going for here is something that looks realistic because, of course, that's the whole purpose here is that it looks realistic. Now we can toggle this before and after. Now you can see, and down here I kind of did a sloppy job. I Normally I spend a lot more time doing this, but I don't want to bore you to death watching me paint before and after before and after. If you wanted to go through here and paint some of this, you can as well. I'm okay with a little bit of light bleeding in through there, but if it's a little strong, I might just go in and paint over it just a little bit. Now you can see my subject not only stands out more, but there's also more glow in the sky. So that's looking pretty good to me. That's how I would do this in Photoshop. Again, you can spend as much or as little time as you want doing this but you can see in just a few minutes how we really brought that to life. Now, last technique here is going to be using a plugin. I think the plugin is a really easy way to do this, um, but you obviously have to own the plugin, which I will link down below. Plugin that we're going to use is On One. We're going to go to On One, and we're going to go to On One Effects. You don't have to own the whole On One suite to use this. If you do own it, though, you can definitely use this On One Effects. But if you just want to buy the plugin, just buy On One Effects, which has many other good things other than um, what we're going to be using in this video. So here in On One Effects, we're going to go ahead and hit Add Filter. We're going to go to Sun Flare. Now, you have a few options between Sun Flare, Bokeh, and Sun Star. I'm actually going to use Sun Star for this. You can scroll through and see which sun star is looking good to you for your particular use. I think for me, I'm going to try the sun star 10. We'll see if it works. 
Um, first thing you want to do, I like to increase the amount to 100. You don't want that like partial opacity sun star. It's not going to look right. Then I will also usually increase the scale and then hit this little button here. This allows me to move this into position somewhere about in there looks good. You obviously want to put this where it would have actually been. So the sun would be somewhere over here on the left side of the frame. I don't want to start it like down here because it's not going to look realistic. So I'll start it right in here. Then I can adjust these settings as needed to make it look a little more realistic. And you know, you can increase the brightness. You can do all sorts of things. Now that's looking pretty good, but I want to finesse this just a little bit more. So I'm going to use the layer mask. You can of course do this in Photoshop as well if you wanted, if you're more comfortable with masking there. I'll show you how to do it here in On One Effects because why not? So you're going to go down to this tool right here is the masking tool. And then you're going to go to this option here and you're going to do edges as the shape. You can simply click on the photo. I'm going to go command minus so I can get a little bit smaller. And we just want to feather this thing out, make it look a little bit more realistic. And, you know, somewhere, somewhere around in here, maybe. You can see you could really play with this until you were blue in the face. But I think somewhere around there is going to look pretty good for me. Of course, you could go in here with a brush if you wanted to touch up a few other areas as well. But for me, that is looking pretty good. Let's close that down. You can see I added a little bit of glow on the left side of the frame. You can see this is probably the easiest way to do it. The results are going to vary. Sometimes it works great. Sometimes it doesn't work at all. But that is how you do it there in On One. Really hope that was helpful for you guys. Whether you have a photo that you want to add some glow to right now or you might have one in the future, save this video, put it in your pocket so that you know these techniques that you can use in order to add a little bit of glow to your image. If you did like what I did here in On One, this video is not sponsored at all, but I did include a link down below where you can pick up On One. I'd appreciate it if you buy it through my link. It gets me a really small kicker, but to be honest, uh, if I didn't think it was a good software, I wouldn't show it to you. There's plenty of other softwares out there that can do similar things, but I do think On One is one of the best when it comes to adding a little glow to your image. So hopefully that helps. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to let me know down below. Um, otherwise, thank you so much for being here. As always, really, really appreciate your support. Um, and make sure to like and subscribe so you get videos every single week as they come out. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Austin James Jackson. We'll see you guys next time.